Hello world, what's going on beautiful people? Yes, it is I, David Javon Anderson the second. It is I, I am him and him is me. How y'all doing out here? This is the very first official episode of Front Porch Conversations. Oh, what? You didn't hear me in the back? I said Front Porch Conversations. Yes, get used to that name, get used to that name, get used to that name. But anyways, I want to introduce myself to the world, to the public. And I also want to dedicate this first episode to women and to be more specific, black women. Because I am a black man, as you can see. <laughs> Yes, I'm a black man, so I have a black mother, a black grandma, you know, black cousins, black aunties, black sisters, black nieces, you know. So I love black women, and black women is very strong, you know. Double minority, they black and they women. Very strong, very supportive. But anyways, just want to introduce myself while giving a shout out to the black women out there in the world. Now me. Little old me. Columbia, South Carolina is where I was born. June 22nd, 1988. That's when I was born. At the one o'clock hour, <laughs> it's funny, I've been having that question all my life and couldn't get an answer because my parents don't know what time I came. But on my original birth certificate, on the time part, it's in military time, and the only thing I can see is 13. Now, if you're familiar with military time, 13, that's 1 o'clock in the afternoon. So I, I know the hour, but I don't know the minute, but I'm an afternoon baby, summer baby. They make me a counselor. Yeah, so, <laughs> you know, one of them. <laughs> Shout out to Mizzy. Uh, I got a... Uh, I got an interesting story, an interesting beginning. And with the interesting beginning, I came up with a theory. Now, when I was, uh, when my parents met, they wanted to have children. They were trying to make children for like two years. And then, boom, my mom finally got pregnant. Boom, came up with me. All right, fast forward uh, after nine months, time for me to come out to the world. I did not, I repeat, I did not want to come to this world. So, my mama had to get a C-section. I had to take a different route. Now, my theory with that is, psychologically, I never left the womb. And that's why, looking back on my life, how I was always so comfortable around women, you know, very relaxed, just feel like at home, at ease, like peace, tranquility. <laughs> Tranquility. So that, that's my theory on that. Because my mama had to get a C session psychologically, I never left the um, I never left the womb. So that's why my love for women is so much deeper, uh, so much rooted. And I got so much passion for y'all and respect for y'all. And just amazed by y'all anatomy. Like Think about it, women, it's the only ones that got the godlike feature to bring life into this world. Like, of course we come together and make one, which is magic within itself. But the fact that they carry and bring the life into this world, that's, good. that's a good. That's a godlike feature. You know, so they're very special, very special. So shout out to y'all. But um, back to, I guess, me, <laughs> since this is the introduction. Um, Like I said, I'm from Columbia, South Carolina. Majority of my life, I grew up off Monticello Road, 215, Monticello Road. <laughs> uh, graduated from Eau Claire, went to college. Went to college in Sumter, South Carolina. Morris College, that's the name. Shout out to them, class of 2012. Mass Comm major. Got a bachelor's in fine arts. Um, 
Now, I'm gonna fast. I'm gonna fast forward to current times. Been trying to find myself, learning myself, being very self-aware, and I think looking back at my life, how I was groomed to overcome that was I was the first child. And between my parents, I was the first child. And for five years, cause my, my, I got a little brother, we five years apart. So for five years, I had my parents to myself. So with that being uh, said, with that being said, I had to learn how to self-soothe. You know, I had to learn how to um, self-defend, self-entertain. You know, um, just do a lot of stuff for self. So I was, my foundation was in that. So now I was faced with this spiritual transition where I had to look in within self. It was a hard battle. I'm not going to say it was easy because it wasn't. But um, like I said, I was prepared for it. So I was able to overcome it. And this is what y'all looking at now. 32 years old. It's July 2020. Don't know the Pacific date. That's why I said it like that. <laughs> um, 32 years old, and this is this is what this is what I'm starting. Front porch conversations. Why you call it front porch conversations? Growing up in um, a neighborhood, or some may say the hood. On the front porch, everybody grew up. Generations grew up on the front porch. You see grandparents on the front porch. You see parents, kids. Um, when you're sitting on the front porch, you, you evaluate in your environment. You see the regulars who stay out there, you know, knowing about the cars and stuff. It's like a um, family community type situation. And also, um, real conversations happens um, on the front porch. Funny, sad, you know, it could be deep. It could be anything. But the common denominator in all of those conversations is that it's raw, like uncut, not stepped on, <laughs> you know, how many adjectives I got to come up for you to get a picture, anyways, that's, 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 that's that front porch, that's the essence, that's the essence of it, you know, you get your hair, you get your hair braided on the front porch, you, know, you see people get, uh, getting haircuts on the front porch, you know, like it's, it's, it's real, it's real deep, it's, it's, that, that's a real valued place within a village, you know, the front porch. So that's why I decided to go with the name Front Porch Conversations. And I'm gonna stand on that, cause I'm from that, you know? But, like I said, I'm gonna get it, um, ded dedicate, excuse me, dedicate this episode to women. Me, currently single. Um, not actively, <laughs> not actively looking, but uh, because I'm actively searching for myself as of right now. So I'm being selfish right now, which is a good thing, which is healthy for your mental and for your well-being, you know, setting healthy boundaries and everything. But I feel like I have to go through this transition to, um, to to prepare myself and once I once I come out she gonna be right there waiting on me ain't gonna be too much longer you know I hope not I'm <laughs> 32 years old you know I prefer a woman with no kids don't shoot me don't shoot me don't be mad I know it's I, listen I got home girls with babies I, it's <sighs> <laughs> I know it's I know it sounds selfish, and I have to be one hundred percent honest. It's low key a selfish statement, low key, um, but it's real. It's real, and the, re the the way I look at it is because I want my first to be her first, and we can share that moment together. You know, like I don't want to be my first and just like yo third child <laughs> like it's still gonna be special because children, children is still uh blessed regardless how they come they blessings regardless so yes i understand all that but i just want to share it's the first moment my first time with another first time and that's all that's all nothing more nothing less that's the reason why i prefer a woman with no kids no other reason 
So yeah, um, the picking's getting slim the older you get, <laughs> more of the store. So hopefully she is not too far uh, away. Um, praying for you, getting prepared for you. I hope you prepare for me. I'm a little complex. <laughs> I'm a little complex. I say I'm a cancer, but I'm born within the Gemini Cancer cusp, which is the cusp of magic, by the way. So I got a little hint of Gemini and a little hint of cancer, but I feel like it's a healthy balance between the two. Trust me. You enjoy the ride. You enjoy the ride. But you got to be prepared. You got you to gotta have two, two seat belts. <laughs> you got to have two seat belts for this ride, man. You got to have two, two seat belts. And I'm a free person, man. Like, I'm a I'm free spirit. So, I know y'all probably think, what, what's, what's, what's wrong with him? Like, why he's single? He's 32 and he's single. What's his flaws? Um, I think one of my flaws is I do things <laughs> that make women mad. Um, it be simple stuff. Sometimes it be big stuff depending on how you look at it. But, um... I do it because if the roles was reversed, I would. God, somebody shoot the engineer. <laughs> but we gonna keep it rolling. We gonna keep it rolling. We gonna keep it rolling. But if I, like, uh, I do things that if the roles were reversed, I wouldn't be mad. So it be it be those moments, you know. Um, like, how like how you didn't think I wouldn't be mad? Cause I wouldn't be mad, you know. If if you would have did what I, which what, what I'm being accused of, I wouldn't trip. Like for example, I'm one of those guys that um, I don't care if my uh, if my uh, lady dance go to the uh, go to a club and dance, you know. Shout out to uh, COVID nineteen, she can't do that for a while, but <laughs> that's a little selfish. But hey, I'm gonna pay the council. But anyways, um, and she go out to the club with her friends or whatever, or who else she go out with, I don't care if she dance with other guys. And like, like I said, I'm a black man, so I don't look at twerking. I don't, I don't look, I don't look at twerking as sexual when it comes to dancing. Like twerking is really just dance, nothing more, nothing less. You know, like I said, I'm from that, so I don't really look at it sexual unless it's a sexual situation. But, um, so girls, girls get mad if you go out to the club and you dance with other girls. Right? True, I'll let you dance with other guys. Huh? Oh, yeah, I ain't, I ain't used to that. <laughs> Came up to do that. Yeah, you, when you got my uh, attention, you took it. <laughs> oh, man. But nah, <clears throat> back to what I was saying. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't get mad. I wouldn't get mad if you dance with another, uh, another guy. Because it's just dancing. Like, don't be disrespectful. Let the man feel, up, feel all up on you. But just him dancing regular how a man dance with a woman who twerk, I don't see nothing wrong with that, and I don't trip on that. So I'm one of those type guys. Like, I feel like when it comes to a relationship, you shouldn't have to feel that you're in a relationship. Like, when you with me, there's no... There's no shackles on your ankles, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're not chained down to me. Like, you with me because you want to be with me. So, like, you still a free individual, but you just decided just to be with me. And that's how I look at relationships, you know? So, uh, I really don't trip on too much. I don't trip on too much. So, I tend to get in trouble for doing things that I wouldn't trip on, but if the roles, if the, um, mm -hmm. roles were reversed, a woman would trip on. Uh, mm -hmm. What's another flow I might have? Hmm. I don't know. Can't think of nothing right now. I'm an awesome guy. <laughs> I know that was cocky. I know. Uh, I know that was cocky, but it's not cocky. It's confidence. I was raised right, man. I was raised right. Mm -hmm. I was fortunate to. Uh, being raised with both of my parents, you know, my daddy was a good role model to how a man is supposed to love a woman. And my mama was a good role model for on, on how a woman is supposed to love a man. You know what I'm saying? My parents, they're still together to this day. So, like, that's my model that, that I have. So, 
Yeah, you know, one of them. <laughs> Although I like saying that, but I like saying that, yo, it's cool. I got it from this guy named Mozzie. But yeah, I'm an awesome guy, man. Both of my parents had a good motto. And like, I never witnessed my um, pops call my mom out her name. I told him like, bitch, ho, like those words. Like, never heard it. Uh, my pops ain't never put his hands on them. And I, I don't witness a couple times that my mama put hands on my daddy. And my daddy didn't hit it back. My daddy just put it like in a, like in a little bear hug. Like, calm down, darling. Calm down. Calm down, babe. Calm down. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, like, that's, like that, that's, 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 the, that's the most contact he did. You know, at, at the wild shit, man, them, them hits hurt. My, my mama is a, a plus size woman. She from the country, um, Wattner, South Carolina. You know, uh, grew up most of her life in Fowey, Eastway Park, you know. Um, Got a lot of siblings, majority brothers. So yeah, she heavy handed. Yeah, so hey, after three good ones, you know, I mean, you gotta stop. Or I might have to, hey, put you to submission. <laughs> Get you I might, back. I might have to put you in the submission, man. Like for real. Like shit's hurt. <laughs> I know, I know I'm wrong, but damn. <laughs> I'm a man at the end of the day, and I can't let you just beat me up. <laughs> I get it though. I get it though. I get it. Shit. <laughs> you don't want to wrestle? <laughs> My mom would throw hands. She don't want to wrestle. She straight, ah, straight jabs. For real. She get it from her mom. That's how that's how my grandma used to uh discipline us. She ain't really like she she used switches every now and then, but if it's not around her, you gonna get punched. Straight up. <laughs> Straight up, if she ain't got nothing around the grab, you get in touch. And it's landing. The first one always land. That's one thing about women, yo. That first hit, they they almost guaranteed that first one because they so especially if they up close. Women got a specialty with up close hits. Like if they already in arms run, oh, I said run, God damn, in arms reach, it's a wrap. That first one gonna land. It, it gonna hit you. You gonna get surprised. Then you gonna get woke. But she, she done hit you twice already. <laughs> like, like she done hit you twice already, so you might be leaking. You know what I'm saying? Ugh. You got to be careful with these women, man. I done got punched in the eye before. And the only thing I did, it froze me up. I looked at her, tensed up, turned around and sped walk off. That's all I did. That's all I did. That's all I could do. I almost shot a girl for <laughs> Hey, man, some of y'all girls could be too passionate, man. Some of y'all could be too passionate, for real. Like, I, I came across a crazy girl. She had a crowbar to my forehead, like one of those, like cross um, crowbar. Had that shit in my head. Had my nine in my pocket. Like, already in my hand, fang on the trigger. And my mind, my mind was already made up. I was like, yo, is she swing? Like, she swing that crowbar and hit me. I'm shooting her in the leg. Like, I'm shooting through my jeans. Like, I ain't even gonna pull it out. Like, for real. <laughs> for, hey, I'm laughing, but I'm dead ass, yo. I'm laughing, but I'm dead ass, yo. Like, I'm not even taking it out of my pocket. I'm shooting through my jeans. Busting your ass twice in your leg. And that's it. I ain't even gonna try to kill y'all. Because die shot not kill. I'm not gonna kill unless I really had to. I don't have to. I, I had, had to get y'all from me. You had a crowbar. <laughs> a crowbar. Like, come on, man. Nah, nah. I can't let you do me like that. I'm sorry. Listen, I got this saying. I'm a man first, but I'm a gentleman second. And the reason why I say that is because naturally, DNA, how I'm built, I'm a man. You know, you're going to have to respect that man. Regardless, so I'm a man first principles and everything. So with that being said, um, that's just what it is. That, that man come first. And, um, second, right after that, I'm a gentleman. Cause gentleman, like a man is what I am, but the gentleman, the second part is how. The gentleman is how. 
like how I conduct myself, I, I conduct myself in a gentleman way. Even in hostile situations, I handle it the most gentleman way. Like, if I gotta beat somebody ass, I will properly beat your ass. <laughs> like, like, if I gotta check you verbally, I will properly check you verbally, okay? Like, I, I, I have a, I have a professional, gentle, a gentleman side about how everything I do, everything, everything I do, say, the way I think, how I move, I, I try to do it the gentleman way, the proper way, all right? So I'm a man first, I'm a gentleman second. That's how that goes. Um, there was more about me. Uh, hmm, where am I going to go? You know what? I'm not going to talk your head off. I'm going to end it. Because I, I like, I like, I'm big on energy. I'm very in tune with energy, vibes, um, the universe, you know, the, 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 the divine, your higher self, you know. I'm, I'm into all that, so I don't like to force anything at all. I don't like to force anything. If anything forces, is already uncomfortable. I don't want it. I don't want it. I'll, I'll tell you no and come back around later, for real. But I'm in on that note. This is Front Porch Conversations. And who that? <laughs> who that? That's David Javon Anderson II. Yeah. Big speaker. And I just want y'all to know one thing. I'm going to be a household name across multiple generations. I'm going to tell you another thing. Y'all know how people get statues made of them after they done passed for the greatness that they did? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have some greatness in this world, and I'm going to get my statue before I die. Yeah, remember that. But well, July 2020, I don't know the exact date, but July 2020 is probably afternoonish, evening, evening, evening ish, probably like four or five. So David Javon Anson II said it. Household name across multiple generations, and I'm gonna have a statue before I die. I'm gone. Front porch conversation. Stay tuned. Treat yourself. Entertain yourself. Give me a listen. I'll.